It's time for our last topic in section 11.1, .1, which is our old friend, sample size. So we learned about sample size in chapter 9, and now it's back. But this time, it's the sample size necessary for estimating the difference between two population proportions, which we didn't see before. When we looked at it previously, it was only for a single population. Let me pull up that page from the exam notes packet. And you can see it's talking about a single population value here. So we had three formulas before. We had one for when we were estimating a proportion with a prior estimate, one when there was no prior estimate, and then sample size for a mean. Mean is kind of unique because we don't do a mean one for chapter 11. But now we have two new formulas that we want to learn. Right? The one on the left is for proportions, the difference in two proportions when we have prior estimates, and then the one on the right is when there's no prior estimate. All right, a couple things. One, remember that sample size is a how many question. So when you look at the questions that it's being, that are you being asked, it'll have things about how many or what size of group, right? That would be a sample size question. And uh, let me see. Oh, this one also. You want to be careful with this one on the right because it can get easily confused with that one from chapter 9. Because the one from chapter 9 has a 0.25 in the front when it's a single proportion. And then in this chapter, we have a 0.5 when it's a double. So you just want to keep those two straight. Of course, they're on your note sheet, so you just have to choose the correct one. The other thing I'm going to tell you is that StatCrunch, or not StatCrunch, Desmos does not like a bracket here. So turn this into parentheses. And I will turn it into parentheses in later versions of the course pack. So in a later semester, you won't have to worry about this. But Desmos does not like brackets. And you can see on the exam notes packet, I already prepped it for being parentheses <laughs> for, for later semesters because I knew that that was becoming a problem. some other things to note. Um, we have to round up just like we did in chapter 9 um, because if we go down, if we do regular rounding, we either won't have the confidence or the error that we wanted. So we must round up on these cases. This is the only time in the whole course that we round up. The rest of the course we just do regular rounding. Normal, you know, if it's 5 and higher, round it up. If it's 4 and lower, let it stay at that value. Margin of error is a decimal because it's very commonly given to you as a percent, and you'll have to change it to a decimal. Right? And then, of course, we've seen these before, but Q hat is the complement of P hat. All right, so let's do an example. Suppose a medical researcher wants to know if there's a significant difference in heart attack rates between those who take placebo each day and those who take aspirin each day. What sample size should be obtained if she wishes to be within three percentage points with 95% confidence? Assuming she uses the old um, a result of an old study where it was found that the proportion who had a heart attack while taking a daily placebo was P1 hat equals 0 0.017 and daily aspirin was P2 hat equals 0 0.009. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's a lot of things going on here. For starters, I can see that I have prior estimates and I can see that I'm working with two values. So I'm going to write the formula. So N, which is N1, which is N2, is P1 hat times q1 hat plus p2 hat times q2 hat times z alpha over 2 over the error squared. All right, now the, the, the hard part, right? So there's the formula right there, formula, done. So now I'm going to do the substitution. And that's where all the work is, lots and lots of work. Now, P1 hat's pretty easy. P1 hat is 0 0.017. So I'm going to do that actually, I think, in a color just so we can see that. So that's 0 0.017. Now we're going to multiply it by Q1 hat. So we actually need to go figure that out. So I'm going to do it up here. Q1 hat is 1 minus 0 0.017, which is. Let's grab Desmos, put our Desmos to work here. Oops, I've got some old problem up here from a previous video. 
from the last video, I think. So 1 minus 0 0.017. And while I'm on the subject, let me do 1 minus 0 0.009 there. So I've got both values. Okay, so that was 0 0.983. So that's what I'm going to put right here, 0 0.983 plus, now P2 hat, P2 hat is right here. 0 0.009, and then I saw that Q2 hat, which I'll write right here, which was 1 minus 0 0.009, is 0.991. So I'm going to put that one right there, 991. Okay, so I've done the first parentheses. All right, now I need the Z and the error, and I need to square it. Now the error is the easiest thing out here. The error is given. Error is right up here at the top. It says within 3%. So your error is 3%. And this is what I meant in, in up here, when error must be a decimal, because 3% percent is useless to us. It's not mathematical, well, not useless, but it's not mathematically useful. We can't put it into formulas. We have to change it to a decimal, and that's what gets put in. The decimal form is what needs to be used in the formula. All right, now what about the Z? Where do I get Z from? Well, it's been a while, <laughs> but Z, we learned how to find that back in chapter, well, technically we learned how to do it in chapter seven, but it's in our exam notes packet. I put it in really large font, critical Z values, Z alpha over two, it's right here. <laughs> so it says go to stat, calculators normal, and you click between. Okay, so let me grab stat crunch. Stat, calculators, normal. I'm going to click between. Zero and one are always set in stone, but I put in the confidence I have, which is 0 0.95, and I get 1.96. Okay, so we better make notes to ourselves. So to get the Z, I'm gonna write 1.96. To get that Z, it's on pay, oh well, let me just say, it's stat, calculators, let me do it this way, calculators, normal. Click between. That's the big mistake a lot of students make. They forget to click between. Right, so make sure you click between to make it work. All right, so now we have to go type all this in. <laughs> So, um, I will tell you that a lot of times um, it's easier for students to do it in two pieces. Um, to do the left-hand piece, which is the parentheses. So they do 0 0.017 times 0 0.983 plus 0 0.009 times 0 0.991. So they just get what that number is and they write it down. So I'll do the same. So that's 0 0.02563. And then they take the other piece, which is 1.96 divided by 0 0.03. Close your parentheses and square it. Squaring it, you either do shift six and two, or in your palette, it's the A squared button right there. And you get 4268.444. Repeating, right? And then what you do is you can multiply them. You can say, hey, take 0 0.02563 and multiply it by 4268.4444444. And sure enough, we get 109.4 as our result. Now, just so you know, you can do it all at once. I generally do. but you know, I like Desmos a lot. <laughs> so, so what I will do is I will type the whole big first parentheses and then I'll do the whole second parentheses and then I'll close my parentheses and I'll square it and I'll get it all at once. But that can be a little daunting for people to fit all into one um, Desmos. So if, if you're not comfortable with that, then just do it in two pieces, right? Find the, the first parentheses, find the second parentheses and then multiply them, that will work. Okay, so we get 109.4, but remember, we must round up. It'd be 110. 
Now that's not the answer either. Why not? Well, because it's N1 and N2. So we actually need, we don't need 110 people total. We need 110 people each. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me, let me just write this. So let me round up, let me make a note. There we go. Let me erase this over here because I want to put the final result. So we want 110 placebo patients. That's N1. And N2 is 110 um, aspirin patients. You need both. So technically, you kind of need 220, right? You need 220 because you need 110 for this group and 110 for that group. So you have to say both of them. You have to say it twice. You can't say 110 placebo and aspirin because that implies 55 for each. You have to say 110 placebo and 110 aspirin. You have to write both of them. I'll make a note. Don't just write, don't get lazy. Don't write 110 placebo and aspirin. That's wrong. 110 placebo and 110 aspirin. You have to say both the numbers and the groups both times. All right, now suppose we didn't have a prior estimate. Well, that's an easier formula. That's n equals n1 equals n2 is the 0.5 times the z over alpha over 2 over the error squared. Oh, sorry, I should have written result here. That's kind of my standard formula substitution result. So this is my formula right here. It's been a while since we've done this. Substitution is right here. Well, the substitution is easy. It's 0.5 times, and it's the same numbers we found before because it didn't change, right? It's still a 95% confidence and the error is still 0.03. We didn't change from part A to part B. So all we need to do is go back to Desmos, and that one's easy to type as one, one big thing. You just say, you know, hey, what's 0 0.5 times 1.96 over 0.03 squared, and we get 2134.2. That's our result. So now, just as before, it's really 2,135, oh, sorry, that looks like a decimal point, but it isn't. My pen touched there. All right, so we need N1 to be 2,135 placebo patients, and N2, and N2, we need both, is 2,135 aspirin patients. And you'll notice something that we talked about in chapter nine has just reared its head. If you have a prior estimate, you need way less people. <laughs> if you don't have a prior estimate, you need a much larger sample size. We ran into that um, in chapter nine, in section nine four, and it's back. So it's just something to note. No prior estimate will lead to a much larger sample, as you can see, from 110 to 2,135.